such a way, come little closer also. Yeah. So that I can see the face. Sit in position. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Shatu ma sadgamaya Tamasho ma joti gamaya Mrityur ma amritam gamaya Abir abir maedi Rudra jate dakshinang mukham Te namang pahinityam Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. O oh Lord, lead us from the unreal to the real. Lead us from darkness to light. Lead us from death to immortality. And ever more shine in our hearts with thy resplendent face. Om Peace, Peace, Peace be unto us all. So we were on the chapter 10th, last chapter, and the state of emptiness and non-emptiness. There, the Bhushishto is now concluding that one should be always engaged in Atmanam Satatam Brahmo Vidhi Chaikam Nirantaram. Think of the Atman. Atman is always ekam, only one. Nirantaram, there is no break in that. It is a continuous state of being. And this is very, this is, in this state, there is no ahang dhyata parang dhyam. This type of mistaken meditation process is no value there. What, what is that? That I am meditating and this is my object of meditation. This concept itself is a mistake. Who is meditating upon whom, where there is only one? If there is only one, then who will meditate upon whom? Only duality. When you come out of that by ignorance, make a separation, I. Then I am meditating on this cosmic thing. So therefore, Vedantic practices that to everything, I'm not this, not this, I am that. That is the purpose and meaning of meditation. That here, not like sitting as we do for our regular practice, <laughs> meditation on saguna brahma. It is called brahman, but with gunas. The same infinite consciousness appears in a human form, human personality with full of love, compassion, redemption, all these things. So, if that idea is kept intact, then you can meditate. But in Vedantic way, if you say, I am that, I am not this, reject, reject, reject everything, then this question of meditation does not come. And why you people making this mistake of medit the practice of meditation? That's why it, don't mistake. We are not to give up our meditation for that reason. But he is talking from a very high platform where he says that this concept of meditation is also there is a trace of duality. But we are living in lower level where we live in duality day and night. First one step, see God is the creator, that duality and I am his creation is a higher level of thought and go on meditating on that, that divine is, has incarnated in the form of eh, Christ, Buddhas, Ramas, Sri Chaitanyas, Ramakrishnas. So, and I focus there. And focusing there, when my mind deepens into it, you find that they become melted into the absolute Satchidananda. Na? So therefore, <clears throat> If you write, go to the highest platform, then there is no meditator and no meditation. But to feel, I am that. That's all. It is a very important point. 
there is no subject object this duality when you meditate subject is me object is object of my meditation and i am trying to do that through my mind but when you purify the mind and mind becomes really purer and purer and then it reaches a state when mind mana amani bhavati when mind becomes beyond mind state then who will meditate on whom this you and me become one this chosen ideal then becomes sachidananda and i also lose my physical identity mental identity emotional identity and then just get in uh, dissolved into that so that was the 23rd verse we read 24th also we read that so aham chin matram eva chintanam dhyana uchchate in vedantic meditation i am that sachidananda infinite ocean i am that there is no separation i am not a bubble i am not a ripple those ideas are not i myself am that infinite ocean of consciousness very high level of student is necessary who can really focus this on this type of thought so this is called dhyanam according to vedanta according to yoga vasishta dhyanam got it got this point clear patanjali's yoga you are following and there is a meditator meditation and the person who is doing meditation patanjali's formula vedantic formula there is nothing but that one and that one is sachidananda absolute blissfulness absolute consciousness absolute reality and that is me this fictitious this body is fictitious this mind is imagination of my mind i am not this because it is changeable it is destroyable it can be manipulated it can be deformed so that's not me going that way you go with dhyanam a state when you will feel i am chit chin matram eva eti i am only consciousness only a nothing but consciousness and think that you are the infinite ocean of consciousness forget your body as if body has dissolved like a salt what what a cube sugar cube you melt into the water what happens you don't see the sugar cube anymore the person he melts into god in that consciousness of the divine chin matra i am that consciousness only i am that consciousness meditate day and night and that's why vedanta says ahang brahmasmi that's the meditation of the vedanta thinking always that i am that i am that i am that and when your mind really gets lost into that iness and that is the vedantic meditation and then dhyanasya abhismriti sammak samadhir abhidhiyate and if you can continue this type of dhyana i am that consciousness and this continues in your consciousness not a split second there is a gap then it is called the samadhi that's why also patanjali says so what patanjali says that dhyana what are the eight steps yama niyama asana pranayama there are the four external practice pratyahara dharana dhyana samadhi so pratyahara is withdrawing the mind to focus dharana holding the mind here dhyanam deeper absorption for longer period and when you be being that deepest level of absorption linger for a longer time then is samadhi the last two part is the same so samadhi should be a state uninterrupted flow of your meditation and what is the meditation here i am that that's why i had been once uh, to in chitrakoot where holy place where sri ram ji sri ram chandra when he went for exile uh, he stayed there after crossing ajodhya and there he stayed that's why it is called a very holy place and there uh, because 
I went from Belur Mott, Ramakrishna Mission. We wanted to stay somewhere for one month or one and a half month to spiritual practice, like a anyone, any wandering monk. But I have no experience of that, so I went first. Wandering monks don't care. They will go anywhere and just lie down and then go for viksha, whatever he gets. But we are babu, we are gentlemen, <laughs> sadhus. So we need breakfast, lunch, <laughs> we need a, a room, covered, no? I cannot live in the, just under the tree in one day. So I was searching where to go, and then I find one place. And that, uh, that is an ashram, means their monks live there. And bah, good place, let me go. <laughs> And their, their only thing is that they do, their, their ashram is called Soham Ashram. And what is their practice? All the sadhus come, and they do aruti, but they do aruti for their gurus. Eh? Only they are initiating gurus who have given the gurus. And guru and brahman, nothing else in between. And what is their practice? They always say, Soham, Soham, Soham. In the morning, four o'clock, they get up and then went to the their shrine, meditation place. Nothing. Everyone is saying, so hum, so hum, so hum. Day and night, one mantra, that I am, that I am, that I am. That is the 24-hour sadhana. Always thinking, I'm in the body. I'm not the body, I am that. So this is the call. Continuous is only saying that making their mind clear, 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 clear. And when that will be perfectly clear, then I will dissolve. Then so and aham will be same. It is like tattvamasi. Thou art that. Thou, thou art that. Huh? So aham, that. Saw. And why is it pointing that way? Saw? Because you have some concept. There is something, here is something. But if both are same, then where is the, this and that? All merge together. So that is the samadhir iti uchyate vidhiyate. We have read that. Now let us come to our today's reading, which is verse number 25 on page 332. Page 332, and state of emptiness and non-emptiness, verse number 25 of the chapter 10. Okay, what it says? <clears throat> Brahma karmana vritti hi Brahma karmana vritti Pravahu aham kritiṃ vina Pravaho aham kritiṃ vina Sampragyato samadhi syat Sampragyato samadhi syat Gyanabhyasa prakarsata Gyanabhyasa prakarsata Sampragyato samadhi There are two types of samadhi. One is called sampragyato, another is asampragyato. We call sabikalpo nirvikalpo. And in sabikalpo, last phase is awesome sampragato, leading to final is awesome pragato. Sampragato samadhi is what? Prabaho manahabritti. Manahabritti means man, mana means mind. Britti means the thought wave, the flow of thought. I am that. So aham, aham brahmasmi, this thought, flow of that, thinking, 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 your mind is flowing in one thought, I am that, I am that, I am that, and whatever comes in your imagination, dissolve, dissolve, that consciousness, in this consciousness, I am that, I am that, I am that joy, I am that bliss, that bliss, and this bliss is same. I am. So when it continuously goes like that, how? 
প্রবাহ মানে ফ্লো মাইন্ড ফ্লোজ ইউ নো রিভার ফ্লোজ হ্যাঁ মাউন্টেন ফ্রম দ্য মাউন্টেন সাম রিভার ড্রিজেস ইট ফ্লোজ সো আমার মাইন্ড ফ্লোজ অলওয়েজ মাইন্ড ইজ ফ্লোয়িং টু দিস সাবজেক্ট টু দ্যাট সাবজেক্ট টু দ্যাট সাবজেক্ট নো বাট ইট উইল ফ্লো ইন অনলি ওয়ান থট that it is all consciousness it is all blissfulness i am that blissful not this as body mind complex no so all is thinking that and if it becomes manohavritti mental modification is brahman 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 i am that i am that i am that continues that pro manohavritti brahma aakara that means thinking that i am that that means your mind is expanding as it were If you see that, it is much bigger than Pacific Ocean. It is much bigger than the whole Earth. It is much bigger than the, this, our galaxy. Expand. How much you can expand? Your mind is restless. Let it go. But all this flow, if it is I am that, I am that, I am that, it goes on like that, then what will happen? All the limitation, all the duality, dissolving, 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 there brahma aakara that one mon mental modification will remain i am infinite i am limitless there is no boundary there is no beginning there is no end that type of thought naturally will come if one sincerely practices vedantic thought no which is bina free from ahankara and but you whatever you think i am that i am that my little ego will continue to be i not the body but one step up i will identify with my emotions even if you get out of that then you'll jump into the intelligence your buddhi and then it goes another jump if you can go there ego but ego remains even then ego remains ah huh? i am that you have may have forgotten your body your mind your intellect and all these other associates you have been successful but ego continues because you know in the five sheets idea external idea is the body annamaya it is made of this body is made of food annamaya it has its birth it has its death so i am not this our pranic energy it has its limitation it can be manipulated it can be increased it can be decreased i am not that which is changeable that is not me i am mind yes i am mind but mind vacillates mind is happy this moment mind is unhappy next moment mind is agitated this moment mind is depressed this moment so mind is changeable i am not the mind i am that unchangeable brahman go on go on but you get stuck last barrier is ego because you have gone from body mind your intellect then five courses last one is the i i i ram swami vivekananda talked about this bahe matra ami ami ei dharanukan the beautiful what swami ji sang what he experienced in his meditation nahi surjo nahi yoti nahi shashank sundar ho ya devoid of the sun is no more there moon has no place there the earth has no place there all is dissolved and dissolved and dissolved and you going on dissolving 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 but last trace ai 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 ha huh? it does not go ai remains so it said that bahe and that flow goes on continue here also saying that stream of mental modification in the form of brahman remains continues to flow that and the ego is the last very good if you can just push that ego out burn then you are achieved the highest because ego was the last very good eh bahe matra ami 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 means ego there is only flows ego ei dhara nukano this flow of ego continues 
for a long time. Sedharao baddhulo. When that flow of I consciousness, I, I, I am that. I am that. Still I, not the body, not the mind, and gun, 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 gun. The last step. That is very fine. Very difficult to get out of this. When Sedharao, that flow of I consciousness, baddhulo stops. Then what will remain? Shunne shunno milailo. Everything merges into that void. It was not there. Earth, water, air, fire, sun, moon, stars. In the ignorant state, it was there. But at this state, it is no more there. So it gets dissolved. Then, sedharao baddha holo. That thought, that mental modification stops. Then what remains? The whole universe went into voidness. What remains? There is no world anymore. There remains only ananda, that bliss. Who will say what is that? Abhang manasago charam. That remains which is beyond your speech, beyond your mind, beyond your expression. Thale, is it void? Well, no, no. Bhoje pran, bhoje that person who have raised him, his consciousness into that, it is not void, it is not zero, but it is some fullness. But who, who will tell that? No one can speak. It is only he has experienced, one who can experience, can experience. See how Swamiji in a poetic way, music, in the lines of music, have given this, what a grand philosophy, what we are reading in this, uh, this Jogava Sishta Sara. Essential bars. So, <clears throat> then when ahankara kritam ego prakasatam on account of excellence, practice jnana. jnana. If one practices this jnana, this knowledge, I am that, I am that, I am that, I am not this, I am not this, I am not this. If one can continue to think like that, then it is because of uninterrupted flow of mind will be chitta vritti will be flowing like that and at the end of that that will reach the state which is called the sampragata samadhi there will be last trace is sampragata samadhi so that's called another definition uh, samadhi samadhi we mean only one word but samadhi has different depths uh, different experiences so the scripture is telling us, and Ramakrishna's life can tell us more clearly. So, when the practice of knowledge ripens, it does not come in a day. It takes whole life, one life, two lives, five lives, depending on how one is very sincere, how we are spending our day, eating, sleeping and, and going, or we are day and night thinking this. It makes a difference. Who will go rich? Any destination, that destination going depends on what? You move every step, even one step, one step. Your distance will be covered soon. But if you think, I'll go today and I don't come for meditation, doing anything and meditation, practice one day, gone, two days, then again another step I'll go. Another step, after five days I'll do that meditation. Another ten days I'll do something like that. Yes, you will reach the destination. When? As much delay is your practice, so much you will reach. But if you are sincere, repeat every second. Every breath you will think, I am that, I am that. Or as a devotion, I am bringing for us who live in this duality. I am God's child, I am his servant. No, whatever. Just bring this idea that I connect with God, connect with God, connect with God. An uninterrupted flow of thought should be for God and God consciousness. So, when the practice of this knowledge, this is the knowledge, this is itself a knowledge. Why? Because you are thinking, not I am not the body, not the mind, I am that self, I am that Satchidananda. That is self-knowledge. So, when this knowledge ripens, matures, 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 thinking, thinking, you get convinced more. Like, you know, a fruit comes in the tree, it is unripened. Huh? It is only 
there is a potential sweetness in it, potential softness in it. But when you see it, it is a hard rock. So intellectually we can say that. But go on practicing day and night. As a result, continuous practice ripens. And being free from ego, then your ego, this ego, identifying with these different levels, is annihilated. It is removed. And as a result, when the stream of the mental modification, what mental modification? A Brahman. I am that. That Brahman idea flows in the mind constantly. It does not happen unless you cry and weep and make your mind pure first. This noble thought is easy to hear. And I can explain eh, in jugglery of words. But to feel it, no, it is very difficult to understand. So, but practice this knowledge, this knowledge, and when it ripens, then being free from ego, uh, the ego will be destroyed, and the stream of mental modification of the form of Brahman continues to flow, as the mind is flowing in unidirectional. Brahman, Brahman, Brahman. Wherever he goes, sees Brahman, Brahman, Brahman. There is nothing else but Brahman, Brahman, Brahman. That's the Satchidan and the consciousness. So hum, so hum, so hum. Huh? If one can do that, really, every path leads us to the goal. Only if one can do it perfectly. Uh, you know, no path is imperfect. But the practitioner's capability and this and this genuineness, that's the more. Practitioner genuineness is also very much important. Huh? If he's very ser serious and sincere. Then what will happen? That state is verily called the Sampragato Samadhi. Now, they are put into a big trouble. What is Sampragato Samadhi now? So that's why we go to the big explanation below. Footnote, note number 28. Look at that bottom. Page 332. What it says, when meditation ripens, it becomes Samadhi. That's the conclusion. When meditation, again, meditation I need not have to define. Meditation is nirantara, uh, uh, unbroken flow, continuous flow of thought. That is called meditation. You are thinking of Ramakrishna. So you think one wave of Ramakrishna, thinking here, Ramakrishna. Another next wave, Ramakrishna. Third thought, Ramakrishna. Fourth thought, Ramakrishna. But for us it does not happen. If we, my God's grace, bring one Ramakrishna, then we'll come, uh, all the faces of the world, all the duties of the world, all the problems of the world, one, 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 ten, twenty thousand, and then, oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, Ramakrishna, again Ramakrishna. Huh? So, it is not continuous. So, what is saying? The meditation ripens. When the meditation of this uninterrupted flow of mind on the truth, here our subject is Brahman, Satchidananda. When it matures, ripens, it becomes Samadhi. Then the meditator and the act of meditation becomes one with the object of meditation and appear in the form of the object of meditation. Eh? So everything turns into what you are meditating. When we think of, say, our Ishta Devata, when mind can flow like that continuously, one thought of Ramakrishna, another thought of Ramakrishna, third thought of Ramakrishna. What will happen? Ultimately, you will feel Ramakrishna only there, nothing else. And similarly, in the Vedantic thought, if you think, I am Brahman, I am Brahman, I am Brahman, I am, Ad, I am Atman, I am Satchidananda, I am nothing else. Any thought comes, no, I am not that, I am this, I am this, I am this. And if continuously one can meditate, uninterrupted flow, then, you see, the object of meditation and appear in the form of the object, then you become the object. That means you become Brahman. Thinking of this, I am Brahman, I am Brahman, I am Brahman. All the modification minds, waves are becoming Brahman, Brahman, Brahman. And when a time comes, a ripen situation comes, then it becomes, you become Brahman. At that time, huh? Eh? So that's a different thing, yeah. Yeah, that is a different thing. Yeah, 
you start. But we are talking about those who are Vedantic meditation. So their starting point is Brahman. I am Brahman, I am Brahman. Yeah. This is, a, uh, as we call, different level people at different grades for them. But for the student of Vedanta here, their thought is, I am Brahman. I am that. I am consciousness. I am not the body, not the mind. I am that. So that thought continuously goes, then you become Brahman. Because nothing remains but that. Even Saguna Brahma, that becomes, you become uh, identified. We are reading in the Bhakti school of thought this afternoon. There, they become, Radha was thinking of Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. One, way, one thought of Krishna, another wave of thought, Krishna, Krishna, thought, no gap in between. Then one time, she is Krishna. She becomes Krishna. Rama Krishna, example, gross example. She is thinking of, I am uh, the Hanuman. Huh? So intoxicated thought, this physical body, a tailbone grew. How much? Then body, body gets transformed. You become like that. Ramakrishna's example is the best example in the modern time. That the body also transforms. Because what worshipping in the practicing in the path of what you call in the path of um, Sokhi Bhava. Uh, the uh, women friend, uh, girlfriend. One girlfriend loves another girlfriend. Like that. Ramakrishna is thinking I am a playmate or girlfriend of uh, Radha. So thinking of that, uh, her whole body transformed. I am, I am the uh, Krishna is my husband. Thinking that, or Krishna, 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 the transformation, whole body will be transformed. So this is the point that this very, uh, at the time, though the meditator and the act of meditation are there, the object of meditation primarily remains. It is not totally gone. Then it will be awesome prakgato. Now first stage is coming to some prakgato. And some prakgato will lead you to awesome prakgato. Huh? Another level. Nirvikalpa, what you call the nirvikalpa. That will come later. Here, you are one-pointed flow. I am that, I am that, I am that. Still, it is gone, almost gone, but the trace of ego remains. At that point, then what happens? The meditation, at that time, though the meditator and the act of meditation are there, the object of meditation primarily remains. As a result, the awareness of the meditator and the act of meditation go unnoticed. That means still ego remains. Very difficult to explain this. It is to be very deep thinking can help us to understand that you are annihilating all the other thoughts and ultimately it is coming into one thought. I am Brahman, I am Brahman, I am Brahman. Almost it is gone. You have no consciousness of your body. You have no awareness of your mind. But still you are there. Still your body is there. It's not that it is totally, as Ramakrishna Vivekananda said in the music song, that it is beyond, everything is gone. It is not that state yet. As a result, the awareness of the meditation, the meditator and the act of meditation go unnoticed. They are there, but it is not noticeable by the mind. This very samadhi called sampragato. Gradually, it emerges, it comes out, eh? it emerges into all sampragato samadhi. This is called the sampragato samadhi, and then is the asampragato samadhi. Can you know how to run this fan? You don't know? No. No one knows. I learn all these things because it's too much hot. Yeah. Learn. Eh? Not now. Today we'll manage. But at least some fans would be there, not AC. I know that this is probably something. Okay. Learn next day. Ah. So gradually it emerges into awesome pragyata. That means you have to do nothing. It is a stage. Ramakrishna gave the example, no? The uh, people in the field, when they are, um, those who do the uh, agriculturist, they are preparing to bring the water connection no? in, their, in their field from the river. So they cut it and making, making, making. And at the, when they go to the last part, they don't do anything. 
by the pressure of that uh, water pressure, that last barrier breaks. So you do up to some pragato practice, eh? but it will turn automatically into a awesome pragato. If you can go that far, then you see your wrist there, last barrier, and that what autom- here we call grace of God. Normally, in we mix with this Vedanto, uh, Hori Maharaj also says, the grace of God, grace, 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 grace. You did up to so far, and you are not to think of the last. It will break automatically. Like you have seen, when the people um, trim that, or, or, or cut the tree, total cutting, eh, chopping the tree. Uh, so they do chopping, eh, and then when it's almost done, a little bit is remaining, they run away. The tree will fall out of its own. That's this. This much remaining that will have of the force of your practice or force what you have done that will turn into that higher state of samadhi, awesome pragato samadhi. But you have to, spiritual life is like that. I got meditation, joy in meditation. Oh, it's okay, I'm happy. I will not do joy in meditation anymore. That never happens. A, a good meditator, if he does good meditation today, he will be inclined to do it more tomorrow. Huh? Ah. So, this is the point. Everyone will have to understand that let us progress up to that far and then the grace will be last to flood with the joy, the ocean of joy. That will be natural. So, then there remains no awareness about the meditator. In that state, there is, here was, meditator was there, meditation was going on, but he is not aware of it. But this awareness, not aware, but little trace of ego, that will also vanish. Then there remains no awareness about the meditator, the act of meditation, or the object of meditation at all. Only the reality is left as the reminder. What will remain? Brahman will remain, and nothing else. It can be said that these two types of samadhi mentioned in yoga scriptures are called Savikalpo and Nirvikalpo in the Vedanta scriptures. Eh? In the jo- Sampragyato, Asampragyato, that is the terminology of the yogic name. Yogic name means what? Who can say? Yogic term is for Patanjali Yoga. If you follow that, you use the terminology Asampragyato, Sampragyato first, leading to Asampragyato. And you talk Vedanta, then you say it is Sabikalpa, Nirvikalpa. Two. Terminology differs in two philosophies. On page 333, when a mental modification acquires the properties of the object of meditation, it is verily called the state of attainment of that form, tadakara prapti. It is not intended to mean that it acquires the shape of the object of, on its length and breadth. Otherwise, there will be transgression or discrepancies in the knowledge of the color and taste, happiness and misery and so forth. As these feelings have no shape, the extent that the non-self mental modification are dissolved, oh yeah, non-self mental modification, I am the body, I am the mind, I have my emotions, this is my, this has happened to me, what we are bothered by every day in our meditation. Every day during meditation we are bothered by these thoughts. When these will go away, mental meditation will be dissolved. Non-self. I am not the self. This idea, anything that brings you from the idea of your big self, then this particular will dissolve. To that extent the mind turns towards the self. As you say, I am not this, automatically it will go on that side. Ramakrishna's example. If you move one step towards the east, west will be off, one step off. So you need not to cry when the west is going away. Rather, your effort should be, 
how you can move steps towards east, how you can always think I am the self, how you can think I am the Satchidananda, how you can think I, I belong to the Lord. So that idea. Anyhow, you move towards that, automatically it will go away. We do sometimes when a, when a confused, when it will go, oh, I am doing so much prayer, meditation, nothing happening. Don't say that. You only do move on, automatically it will drop. Your practice itself will help you to get out of it. To that extent, the mind turns towards the self, meaning which means that the self becomes its focus. When all the non-self mental modifications are entirely gone, non-self, non-capital self, my Satchidananda self, right? all the idea, anything in the material world which bothers my mind, it can be thrown away. Rubbish. Get out. Get out. I am not that. I am not that. I am not that. Anything comes. A Vedanta student will have the courage to say, anything comes, I don't care. Get out. I don't care. Whatever comes, it may, may be very adorable something. Vedanta student is like, I don't want anything but Atman, myself. So that's a powerful practice. So entirely when it's gone, what will remain? There remains no separation between the mind stuff and the Brahman. Your mind then, the Ramakrishna said, mind becomes Brahman. Hmm? Mind becomes Brahman. What are the three? Three. Uh, mind. This is the uh, Shuddha. When the mind becomes pure. Eh? Shuddha mon. Shuddha buddhi. Shuddha atma. When it's pure, Shuddha means pure. Mind. Pure mind. When your mind becomes pure, your understanding will be pure. You need not have to work for that. Purify your mind, automatically it will be intelligence, understanding will be pure. And your ego will also be pure. What is pure ego? Pure ego is I belong to God. Pure ego, I am a servant of God. Or I am that. This is the pure ego. Impure ego, what? You don't know who am I? Uh, you have the courage to say like that? I am such and such. So that's the ego. It's called the unripe ego. And ripen ego? All this trash will go out from it and then it will remain only Brahman. Then in every aspect the mind turns towards Brahman, uh, meaning Brahman becomes the focus of the mind and it becomes Brahman ultimately. This is called the mental modification in the form of Brahman. Thinking of Brahman all the time, what happens? Mind becomes like Brahman. Mind cannot be Brahman. Mind is limited, Brahman is an infinite, how can it be? But mind becomes purified and purified and purified, it becomes capable of holding more of the Brahman idea. Idea, idea, idea. And we talked about the frog idea. And frog will say, hey, Brahman, are you big? How much big? They say, yeah, this much. No, go, Brahman, are you this? I am Brahman, I am Brahman. With the mind, with the scale meter, and mind goes, 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 and one point when mind will, like a frog, give a jump and die. Yeah? It busts his belly and dies. When mind dies, then who will say, hey, ocean, how big? Who? You? Who will say who? What? That means that mind has taken the shape, as it were, the ocean shape. But mind cannot take the ocean shape, but the Brahman shape here. But that will come spontaneously. So our, what is indicating that our only duty is to think positively, that I am Atman, I am pure, I am stainless. I am not the body, though I am in the body. I am not the impurities of my mind, though I am living with the mind. My understanding, right or wrong, is not me. It is made by the mind. But I am beyond mind beyond intellect, beyond understanding, beyond ego. So, continuous. It should be noted here, on page 333, second paragraph, that though ignorance is abstracted in conscious mind, 
attain through recourse to the Supreme Self for support. That is, at the Nirvikalpa Samadhi, which manifests through the unbroken mental modification, I am Brahman, that Samadhi still cannot destroy ignorance. So you continue that. Even you say, I am Brahman, and going to the finer and finer expansion of the mind, but still there will be a trace. It is the axiom of the Upanishads that knowledge alone is the destroyer of ignorance. Samadhi only becomes a tool in removing all the distraction of the mind and one-pointed mind. So, meditating on this way, the process of meditation helping you to go and mind then takes a huge form of Brahman idea and then then the mind, the wave fails, mind drops. As a result, knowledge comes spontaneously. So, what they are saying, our meditation and etc. are helping us to reach the state of nirvikalpa state. Huh? It cannot be gone in one jump. So, here is the significance, how the reconciliation. Got it? Got this point? Clear? Uh, we can move on, move on, move on, make the mind purer and purer. As it becomes purer, it becomes more uh, understanding about the reality, truth, bigger, bigger dimension, bigger dimension. And it ultimately goes to a place where he sees Brahman alone only. The mind, that mind sees only Brahman alone. But mind still there. And this pure mind is pure ego, pure buddhi. So, at that point, even you have not reached the goal. But it is still monobritti. There is a ripple, brahmakara vritti. Uh, it said that brahmakara karito chitta vritti rudeti. There arises a mental wave as big as almost like Brahman. Uh, and when that arises, it is a, just the precondition of attaining that Brahman consciousness. Still trace of mind was there. When that trace of mind will drop, the knowledge will automatically reveal the truth. And who, to whom to reveal? That man is also dead. The, the frog, when died, who will know? Frog will, uh, how big is the ocean? He is dead. Then she has become one with the infinite. So this is the point. It is the axiom of the Upanishads that knowledge alone is the destroyer of the of ignorance. Samadhi only becomes a tool ordained in the removing all the distractions by making the mind one pointed. Only to make the mind one pointed, our meditation has helped from distraction to one pointed. Samadhi does not destroy ignorance. Aye. Even if you get the Samadhi, trace of ego remains. So Samadhi cannot destroy ignorance. Rather, the unbroken mental modification is the help with which the Samadhi is attained. When on that modification, the Brahman consciousness is reflected, then only is the ignorance totally destroyed. The yogis also attain Samadhi, but their ignorance is not annihilated because the absence of an unbroken mental modification is supported by Vedanta. So it says, yogis can attain to that state of uh, what is called yogic samadhi, but unless uh, they attain to the knowledge, then again, trace of mind remains. So that is not the ultimate goal. So Vedanta says that ultimately, one point, uh, mind was distracted from the beginning, as we are, to make the mind focused on one object. And then Vedanta comes, well, no, no object, make it not this, not this, not this. Go on, go on, go on. Then your mind becomes more pure and can catch bigger dimension, understanding about Brahman. And going on to that at last phase, there arises in your mind a huge wave. That wave is called Brahma. Akara modification, mental modification in the shape of Brahman. It's a fictitious term. 
how it will be shape of Brahman. It cannot, Brahman is so big, mind cannot take a shape. But it is his optimum level. The frog gives a last leap of jump. And there, as soon as he jumps that way, that's the biggest expanse he can go. And then what happens? On that huge, what is called the mental modification, the light of the Brahman shines. As soon as it shines, the, the wave drops. The frog dies. And then what happens? Knowledge comes. The ocean cannot be measured. So Brahman cannot be measured. Brahman cannot be described. That's why Swamiji said, when you, everything is gone, everything is gone to the void. But is it void? Well, no. It is some experience which cannot be expressed. So that's why when they come down from that experience, from Samadhi, like Ramakrishna, he used to come down, and then he could say something, feel something in the level of duality. But this duality is changed. It is no more the table. It becomes consciousness. It is no more the book. It becomes the consciousness. It's a wonderful. Here, we are reading some Hori Maharaj's letter. So we have uh, ended the 25th verse. We'll read 26th verse tomorrow, next day, next week. But I will read today. There is a very beautiful story by in the, uh, written by Hori Maharaj in, in his letter. So here it says, Uh, this book is no, to Turiya. Huh? No. This is also dedicated to Sami And this letter is from Sami Turiyananda, Hari Maharaj. And uh, what he says, it is in 1917. There he writes to a gentleman that it is not so easy to give up all attachments. But when the mind becomes analytical and, and becomes practice discernment, then these desires cannot control you much. Then Vasishta Dev told Ramachandra what he says, ekam vivekam, etc. Adaya viharan nebo sankateshu namujyut. One verse from the big book. This is the small book. Uh, as you know, big book is how many? 6,000 verses. This is only 223 verses. So this is the cream of the big book. So what it says? A, one, there is take, make your life a companion. Who is your companion? Analysis, discrimination, discernment. Make discernment your companion. Make a friend. Uh, and if you can wander in the world making discernment as your friend, understand? Discernment as your friend. What do you mean? What does it mean? It means that you are discriminating. All the time. All the time. Mm. Walking, eating, talking, or whatever we are doing in our life, everything, is it permanent? Is it impermanent? If you can keep this in your mind, then seriousness of the thing will go away. You are doing something, yeah, you do it in intensity, what is to be done, but what will be the consequence? Ah, it will happen. It is all temporary. It will change. Today it is like that, tomorrow it will be different. This consciousness, if it is kept in the mind, one part of the mind, analysis, discrimination, make friend. Make discrimination your friend. There is a song, Ramakrishna is having two begging bowls on both sides. Eh? What is that? One is Viveka, discrimination, and Bhairaggo, renunciation. Ramakrishna is dancing all the time with two uh, pouches on both sides. One pouch is discrimination. That's why you know nothing can disturb him. And Bhairaggo, renunciation, detachment. As a result, net result it comes. So here is the advice of Bhushishto that you know, if you can make this, then even you will not be overwhelmed at the 
facing great danger. If you can fix your mind confined with this, then moho, delusion, will not be able to touch you. These are all impermanent things. Always remember in your mind, if you can remember, then what your desire can do, what your expectation can do. It cannot. You know it is impermanent. Knowing impermanent, you work. This is, see the philosophy here. You know it is impermanent. Keep that idea in your mind. It is impermanent. It is temporary. And Satchidananda is the only truth, or God is the only truth. Then whatever you do, you will do sincerely, but okay, done, done, good, good, bad, bad. It is not touching you. It cannot touch you. And there is no fear, even you have little trace of some desire. But only remember, that desire which makes you forget God, that is most dangerous. Do all your activities in your family life, keeping God in your mind. Desire can make you digress your life's journey. Call upon Him. Say your prayers to Him. God will make everything perfect. In the Jugoba sister, this big book, there is a story of renunciation. What is that? Some brahmachari, one brahmachari, uh, thought that I am a great renouncer. I have renounced everything. And that's why he have renounced his money, his wealth, huh? his house, his car, his bank balance, everything renounced. And he came like with a small, simple cloth, simple, ordinary cloth, and one cushion, a meditation cushion, and one begging bowl. Okay? And he was very happy with that. I have renounced everything. Then he came to Guru and and seeing him, Guru said, What have you renounced? He said, You have not renounced anything. Are he thought I've renounced my bank balance, I've renounced my car, I've renounced my luxurious uh, maybe gold jewel, whatever I had, and everything I've given. I have only one meditation cushion and begging bowl, and a simple cloth. My guru says, what you have made it, what you have given up? You have not given up anything. Okay. Then he thought, let me do Then One day, what he did? Brahmachari then thought, oh, I have nothing of my own, except my wearing dress, and this cushion, and the water bowl. If guru Dev, my guru, is indicating that I should not have them, Thinking this, he gave up all these things and put a fire in front of his guru and just wanted to offer one by one these things. So now I have nothing. I have no <laughs> meditation cushion. I have no cloth I was wearing. Okay, that also I give. And the water bowl I put into the fire. So, I have renounced everything. I have nothing now. Really, you see, he, is, he has nothing in his position. <laughs> so, the Guru said, what have you given up? You call cloth? Are you, cloth is made of cotton. And this, this is similarly, the meditation cushion is made of cotton. And your commandalu is some, made of some wood. Yet they are made of different material materials. So it has come from the man nature and it has been in the form and you have burned into the fire. What what have you given up? Then what have you renounced? What you have renounced? Then the Brahmachari thought, What I have? So I have I see that I have only my body. This body is only, I have nothing else. 
All of my possession is gone. And the least thing from spiritual life, what I used to use, that is also I burned. Then Gurudev said, no, you have not given up. What, what renunciation you have done? You don't have any renunciation. <laughs> My God, what is that? Then he thought that this body is the only I have. So let me put my body into the fire. <laughs> so Brahmachari then, uh, and when he's going to put his body into the fire, then uh, Guru, the teacher said, wait, wait, wait. Uh, what are you going to do? Just analyze that. What is, what, is, what is this body? It is not yours. It has come from your parents and that has been grown with the food which is made of five elements. What is yours? This body has come because of the parents. Huh? And then when he born, it was fed milk and other things which is material. So body has grown like that. And you are giving out the body into the fire. What is yours? Your thing you are giving. See how finer is the analysis. Then the Brahmachari's eyes were opened. And he could understand by the grace of Guru, that what is the cause of all trouble? All trouble ends Mind. when I can see. What is that? Mine. Mine, no. Mine. No. Ego. 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 I. Have you given up this I? We, can, we give up everything which does not belong to me. <laughs> Money, no one is born. No baby borns with tons of money in his pocket. And no baby born, that is the whole world goes to praise in the baby. No. It is not yours. It is gained in the process of life. And what is gained, that is to go away. It is not yours. Yours is your ego identity. I am this, this is mine, that is that. That subtle thing that give up, cut that eye. So, this ego, renunciation of ego, is the right type of renunciation. Mm. Otherwise, external object, even the, the destruction of the body, is if you renounce, it is no renunciation. Therefore, Turiyananda Swami's instruction, then therefore, this is acceptance and rejection. All these are bad. What to do? Just take refuge in God. Or in Vedanta you will say, take refuge in Brahman. Anything we expect, that is full of fault. And that ego is the only cause of all suffering, all bondage. Om Shanti 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 Hi Hari Hi Om Tat Sat Sri Ram Krishna Panamastu. So tomorrow ten thirty is Upanishad class by Shami Satyamayananda, and seven thirty will be Gospel class by Sarvadevananda. Okay, thank you. <laughs>